Rebic, Rafa, tira, gol! Raffaele Leao, oggi segna Leao, la mia giornata è iniziata così, oggi segna... Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Sempre Milan podcast. I'm your host, Oli Fisher, joined once again by Anthony Torgrid. Yeah, what's up guys? I know uh, last week I signed off saying I'd be gone because I was going to be in Milan, but uh, I'm not and I won't be. So here we are and uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm back. New year. So excited for this one, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, I'm, I'm not super too. So yeah, I'm happy to be back again. But uh, yeah, happy to be back for a nice little preview. Yeah, happy new year to everyone who listens. Um, this is it, 2022, I suppose. The year that we hopefully finally win a trophy or something. Um, feels like it's been a good last couple of years for the club overall. Um but 2022 has a nice ring to it to win our 19th league title, doesn't it? So let's see what the new year brings. But um, hope everybody uh, had a great festive period. Um, and we've got a, a bit of a busy one, I suppose. We've got a couple of games to preview. And the best thing about it is, about this episode, is that the January transfer window opened today. So we've got a load of rumours to talk about that probably have absolutely no substance at all as naturally happens um, this time of year. So, going to be a fun one. Um, we start with the actual games that we have to cover, I suppose. Um, Roma is the first one up. We play Roma on Thursday night at San Siro. Yeah, the, we were all meant to be at it. Um, so, this is a bit of a, a tough one. Um, first point to mention is probably that Cyprian Tatarashanu has COVID and will not be available for the game. That was announced literally a couple of hours before we sat down to record this. Um, the second is that the uh, attendances in Syria have now been capped at 50% again. They've gone from 75% back to 50 Um So you're probably looking at about a 38,000 crowd for this one, uh, which is a shame. Thought we were kind of out of the woods, but, you know, winter can bring some unpredictable stuff, such as the fact that us far, despite booking uh, nearly everything and not go into it because of the concerns over COVID. So, um, yeah, just everyone stay safe because it's still a pretty uncertain time. Um, speaking of uncertain, we've got Jose Mourinho's Roma. Now, nobody knows what to really make of Roma this season. Um, they've been a bit underwhelming. I think it would be fair to say they've been beaten by the teams that they probably should have been beaten by. They got beaten the derby by Lazio, got beat by Juve, got beaten by us, got hammered by uh, Inter. Um, and then, on the 18th of December, they went to Atalanta and won 4-1. Um, so there is still some bits from this Roma side that make them dangerous, I suppose. Uh, a couple of absentees for them. One unnamed COVID case and the other, Borja Moyaral. And then El Sharawi is going to be out, which is good because it feels like he always plays well against us for whatever reason. Um, former club and all that. Um, how are we feeling about this one, boys? Is uh, Tim Abraham out? I thought he got in a, uh, a car accident this morning. Yeah, he's okay, apparently, but okay. it wouldn't surprise me if he was shaken and couldn't, you know, if there's concussion protocol at play. I don't, I don't yeah. know, um, but there'll be more It depends on the on severity that. of it. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I'm not worried at all. I think we're going to do the double over him. Um, I predicted him to finish eighth, and I'm more confident than that's going to happen than anything else this, this season. I just... The Atlanta game for them was a blimp on the radar. Everything else has been par for the course. They're just not not a good team. But every dog has their day, so maybe they'll get one. Hmm. Matty, do you have um, confidence? I am confident because we've had a break hmm. between our last game and uh, Wednesday. If there was no break, I wouldn't be as confident. Uh, we're supposed to be getting Rebic and Liao back, so that's going to help our attack a lot. Um, I think that we're strongest when Liao's on the left side and Rebic is up top. So we should win, ideally, but you know the the way that the last five or six games have gone, we have not looked very convincing. Um, but hopefully, we get six points by Sunday. So Calabria is coming back as well, right? And Zlatan. Yeah, he's, okay. he's I thought Zlatan was not for sure. No, Zlatan's the one definitely... who was definitely okay. He missed the end okay. of the game with knee discomfort, um, and he, he was absolutely fine. It was just precautionary, I think. He started a lot of games, played a lot of full 90s as well, which was not Was Empoli our last game? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, see, like, after we scored about two goals, you could tell that the team just started to click again. So I'm mm-hmm. hoping that that is going to continue to roll over and the break did not hurt us. 
I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. The, the, it, it can like work against you in a way, the break, um, because we had momentum going into it last season. And then it came along and, and um, we thought, oh, it's great. We'll get some injured players back and stuff. And then we never really got properly going um, in the second half of the season. And then we had a, a drop off when we lost to Spezia and then we lost the derby against Inter. And next thing you know, we're, we're the second horse. And then we nearly ended up losing our top four spot. So the hope has to be that we respond better this time. Um, but having those bodies back is is massive, Steph. Yeah, I think um, yeah, getting having the options off the bench, I think that's important. I guess in, in, especially in attacking end, if we got players like if Rebic and Liao aren't fit enough to start, then at least we can bring them off uh, off the bench, or same as Ibrahimovic, or um, even players like you know Messias or whoever might start up in the attacking positions. But um, yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm, I don't know if Pe- uh, Pellegrini is it Pellegrini? Yeah, Pellegrini for Roma. I don't know if he's fit because I remember he was injured for a large span towards in the last. Um, Sky is saying he's uh, he's okay and he will. Start. He's okay. All right, that's a bit annoying. Um, mm. You know, it's. I think we got a better bench than them, especially with the players we got coming back. So um, I'm, ho- I'm hoping it's just going to be like a sort of like a calm victory. But um, but our forms in our side, previous victories, um, you know, home and away. Uh, I mean, we've got the draw last last year, three three. But away from home, we've been pretty strong against them. Two back to back, two ones. So yeah, I'm, I'm confident. I'm quietly confident. I was just hoping there'd be a bit more fans in the stadium to sort of back mm-hmm. the team um, to get the victory. But uh, you know, I've seen. I think we'll go into it pretty confident. Yeah, I'm not sure what the sample size is, but I'm pretty sure I saw a stat that Pioli's undefeated against Mourinho. And I don't know <laughs> if that's just one game and that was like a, a joke <laughs> stat, but I saw it. It still counts. Like, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it's still true. It's not incorrect. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, definitely uh, a big thing having our two left wingers back. Let's be honest. But uh, if if neither of them are fit enough to start, which I think might be the case, they've missed weeks. You know, we're not talking um, they were out for a couple of weeks or whatever. They've they've been out for a while and they're still doing a little bit of individual work in training by the sounds of it. That to me suggests that neither have more than say thirty minutes in the legs. Yeah. Uh, let's say that's the case. Salamakas on the left again. It's gonna have to be in it really. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I, think... I mean, are we, are we not really spoken about much about our midfield options? I mean, uh, Benacer and Kesty, they've gone, haven't they? Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> really going to have to be like what well, I'm guessing that's for Mali and I'm guessing he's probably going to have to go for Bakayoko maybe at the double pivot. Um, yeah. Can't yeah, see that's not ideal. I'm you know, or is Krunic starting for up top, you think? Bakayoko and Tonali to play together. I'm probably the only one you are. who's pumped. Mm. But hey, second half of the season, the last time he was here, he was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping that I, I think that he's played a lot with Kessier and Benacer, and Benacer is out of form. Kessier is out of form, so it made Bakayoko look worse. And the last time mm. Bakayoko looked great was when Kessier was playing great. So as long as Tonali's playing good, hopefully Bakayoko will like help. Fine, fine. I think that's a good, that's a good point because we've not really seen them play together as a duo, have we? That sort of dynamic. We've seen Benacer and um, and Bakayoko be played together, and obviously in not a successful partnership. And Kessie and Bakayoko also have a history of playing together, and they have done it a few times this season. But mm-hmm. we haven't seen Tonali and Bakayoko, so maybe they might have attributes that complement each other. So, well, do you think there'll be a temptation from Pioli to look at the first two league games of the season when he had to start Tonali Krunic in the pivot and it actually worked? I know the standard of opposition wasn't great, don't get me wrong, and and to experiment with it against Roma is a different thing, where down the middle that's probably their strength. Um, but I, you know, Krunic is, I I would argue, Krunic is our most experienced at this point, yeah, available. I mean, outside of Tonali, you know, that I don't, I think that Krunic is gonna earn the spot over Bakayoko, but, you know, he may not yeah. keep it. I think, I think he only might to... go safe. I think he might go safe and just be like, and, and, and I know it sounds stupid me saying safe is playing Bakayoko, but I think he has a history of playing in that position for a while. He does historically offer you that sort of defensive stability when it comes to the midfield and, and at least mm-hmm. allowing us to have a block when it comes to just, you know, if we want to kill it, kill it off in the midfield, he's more likely to do that than someone like Krunic. Krunic just progresses the ball forward better than someone like Bakayoko. So mm-hmm. he might just play it safe. And that's, this is the fear I have into this fixture, although I'm confident if he does, if he goes for like safe, well, his version of safe uh, selection, so Bakayoko's and maybe like, even like Krunic at left wing, for example, that's not really going to do it for me. I think I'd rather you kind of be a bit more daring and play a, mm-hmm. like a Rebic or a Liao from the start or Salamakers on the left from the start and Messias from the right. 
thought was yeah, I, I would like splitting the halves for Liao and Rebic on the left. I, I, I know so. 45 awesome. minutes yeah. might be might be a stretch for what they're capable of right now, but I mean, worst case scenario, you, you take one off a little early. You know, I mean, yeah. it's not that. It's not, I would I'd rather that. start with Rebic and finish with Liao because I'd go the opposite. Miss... Yeah, I would do the opposite as well. You think? Cause, cause, yeah, because Liao's historically really good in first halves. So he just mm-hmm. takes it to teams. You know, we've got to remember to mm-hmm. like the games like against Roma. Uh, well, last year and in Milan last year, where he could just take on players. He's he doesn't care about waiting out for the game to sort of have impact and run that right back. Yeah. He just goes straight at it. So yeah, that 13 second goal or whatever it was. Yeah, and yeah. he does it with a huge smile on his face. That's yeah. exactly. And plus, and plus, Rebic has been out longer. But, you know, he's been out what since the last game was October. Whereas Liao played a bit in like October, a bit in yeah. November. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah. And I feel like Rebic changes the dynamic as soon as he comes on. So yeah. depending mm-hmm. on what the situation is with the game and like you know, the hour mark or whenever it is, yeah. he, he might be able to just change it up and either improve it or, or keep Rome in the mud, depending on where they're at, you know, but because I'm assuming Zlatan's going to start from the, yeah. from the first. Yeah, yeah, Roma got like tired defenders and you bring someone like Rebic on, who's aggressive in his pressing. Yeah. That's much more effective than say like Liao late into the game. I don't know. And remember with you... Calabria going forward as well. I mean, mm-hmm. he's a very attacking minded. I think we're, we've forgotten how important he is to our attack. Okay. We're going to see that. Do we think he's going to start? Do we think Calabria is going to start? I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It sounds like he's been fully fit for sort of a week and just wasn't risked against Empoli. Um, you not think which would be good. like the history of Florenzi, obviously ex Roma player, and he scored in the last game. I'm not yeah. saying I want him to, but he might just be very written in the stars for purely to pick Florenzi. And then make- I think I Calabria's think got a better history be against Calab- against uh, Roma. To be honest with you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah scored yeah, twice, and yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think you look at their profiles. It's you would certainly. Th- I guess without seeing a ball kicked and stuff, you would certainly look at Liao and think he'd be the one who'd come on and be a better impact sub than Rebic because of his pace, directness, running at a tired defence and all that. But it actually does work the other way. Um, Rebic is just like bringing on a pit bull who's waiting to go out and chomp. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that um, I was sort of looking through when, when trying to get some stuff for the game, um, if you are betting men, I would probably stick some money on Tonali to get a yellow card um, because he's one away from suspension and we uh, could do with that being against Venezia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the game after Venezia, Spezia, right before <laughs> Juve. So if we do, if he gets it either today, or I'm sorry, um, against Roma or against Venezia, then we're we're in good shape, you know? Yeah. yeah. So um, I think he should get one, to be honest with you. I just look at this being the harder game. I think he might have a battle against Pellegrini to keep him quiet. He might he might get that yellow card. We'll see. Uh, I don't want to like buy into the conspiracies that players deliberately get yellow cards, but we've seen stuff like that before. Oh, we absolutely like, have. Who was that guy recently? He, um, he got injured and just took his shirt off before he got stretched <laughs> off so that he'd miss it while injured. That's amazing. Oh, it's yeah. fantastic. It was honestly a really smart game move, but... The best yeah. one I ever saw was uh, Leandro Paredes get a, like a really daft red card while he was at Zenit, so he could fly back for the Boca v River Super Classico final. That's uh, funny. And then the game got postponed, so he couldn't even watch it. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, or Neymar getting um, injured every year for his sister's birthday. <laughs> yeah. No I was just thinking, there. there's just a good like, um, family man. There's a few good like kind of little stories in this fixture, even though it's, you know, confident about Roma, that you've got the whole Tamori versus Abraham thing again. Um, mm. So there's that history that they have from Chelsea. You've got Romagnoli, used to be a ex-Roma player, Florenzi, ex-Roma player, El Shirari. I know he's out of it, but, you know, there's all these sort of mm-hmm. little pieces of the history between uh, some players in both squads, and it makes it quite a nice little fixture. I mean, it's a shame we didn't go to it, man. I thought it'd be... I think it's yeah, it would have been good. I mean, yeah, it, it, it yeah I... Uh... I feel like we always get more. At least I feel like in the past two or three years we've held Roma, we've won most of the, of the games, but we always get a little bit nervous beforehand. So I'm pretty confident that we'll get all three points yeah. here. That's kind of how I feel too. I feel like we've just been a better team the last four or five years, maybe here. Maybe not five, but three or four. Um, yeah, man, I wish it would have gone too. It would have been my second straight Milan versus Mourinho game, but. <laughs> We lost the first one. So. A couple of other ones as well is that Veritu, um has scored against us, I want to say, in two of the last three. It could even be three of the last four mm-hmm. games. Um, and then there's Mkhitaryan, who was apparently pretty close to joining us in the summer. Um, we made an offer and he decided to extend his contract with Roma mm-hmm. for another year because you know he's not got a great relationship with Mourinho. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, plenty of good battles in there. 
I suppose all we can do now is... Predictions. Do a prediction. Um, I don't think it's going to be easy. I look at the Napoli game and I think, please don't go behind because Mourinho's side will close up and will make it incredibly difficult for us. Um, and I just look, like I said, I look at the Napoli game and I think we struggled then to break, break them down um, when they had something to defend. That being said... I look at our 11 and I think we should be winning this game and they're still figuring a lot of stuff out under Mourinho whereas we have quite a lot of certainties to our game. 2-1. Home win. Um, I'm going to go against your entire analysis there and say we go down early because Bakayoko yeah. is going to mess something up but then we're going to come back and win it 3-1 and just thrash him. That'd be nice. I think we're going to win 3-0. I like that With more. a Bakayoko goal. <laughs> Yeah. Don't put your money on that one. <laughs> hey, well, yeah. I'll, do. I'll do. Yeah, good odds. Probably pay out well. I won't yeah. refund if you lose, so. <laughs> Be it. <laughs> okay, I haven't gotten any refunds lately, so. Uh. <laughs> uh. Um, yeah, I mean, I think because the last couple of games before the Empoli one, I was quite confident. And then I said for like wins, and it never happened. And then I went to the Empoli game, I thought, oh no, we're going to lose this one. And it ended up. So I'm going to be negative for the point of being hopefully for a good result. So I think we're going to yeah. draw this game. I think it's going to be 2 2. Don't really mean it. <laughs> I'm not sure if that works anymore now. That you're no, yeah, you're taking out rid saying, of the reverse jinx, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, um, I just uh, skip straight into the Venezia one then as well. Um, yep. Another one that we were hoping to kind of be at. Um, we booked a long enough trip to go to that game, but knew getting away tickets for this one would be hard. We've not played them in a while. And also, um, it's a smaller way end and... Now there's an even more reduced capacity and you'd have to travel from zone to zone. So, yeah, would have been great to be at this one, but it might be one for next season. Um, Venezia are uh, back I'm not going to a Serie line. B game next season, sorry. <laughs> They're going to stay up. up. They're going to stay up. <laughs> they are. I mean, I don't know if I backed it. I can't remember. I anyway, did. Anyway, um, yeah, Venezia are back in the top flight for the first time in 20 seasons. Um, and... They're actually keeping their head just above water at the moment. They're six points clear of the bottom three, which is actually pretty emphatic, to be honest. Um, but they've won four of their opening 19 games. They've lost 10 of them. Um, the only problem, perhaps, is that they, they're they on a winless run of six. Uh, they've only won two of their last 11 games in the league. They're conceding quite a lot of goals as well. What, what two conceding... of their last 19, I thought? Not two of their last 19. Um, they, they've won two in the first set, uh, two in the first eight rounds, and then they won the twelfth oh, and the thirteenth. I, I thought they only had two total. They're on four. Okay. No, yeah. Um, so yeah, they conceded four against Atalanta, four against Hellas Verona, three against Lazio, and that's all in the last five games. So they are leaking goals a little bit now. Um, but of course, some people think Matteo Caldara coming back is the answer to all our problems uh, in defence. I don't think anybody really thinks that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they've signed Michael Cuisance, I presume it's pronounced, on loan, um, on loan or is it permanently? I think it's permanently from uh, Bayern yeah, Munich. Yeah, permanent. I just got the update, actually. Yeah, um, so 4. that's 4. an interesting million. one. Yeah, uh, I think he's one of them who was regarded as a wonder kid and has now uh, just, you know, settled into a reputation as, as being someone who didn't quite make it at a big club. Um, but they have got some other interesting players. Uh, Ethan Ampadu is there. Uh, he's on loan from Chelsea, plays for the Welsh national team. Um, their top scorer is Mattia Aramu uh, Thomas Henry sounds like it could be Thierry Henry's son but it's not um, yeah that's you're missing probably... two of the most important names two of the most important players uh, they've not scored goals I know you run about Tana yes they Kessman have and there's Jack one goal between the two of them not in the league there isn't it's boozy or something this. isn't it I thought Busio had a goal, yeah. Oh, he definitely he? has a goal. Oh, he's up there. Yeah, he's got one. Oh, so that's one go. in the yeah. combined 40-odd appearances between them. They're doing the business for Well, him. neither of them are strikers, so, you know, it's, it's all good. Goals win games, mate. Goals win. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, here they are. Venezia, they've got apparently nice kits. I think they're overrated. Um, and I think we're going to emerge with three points. Um, but I, I couldn't say if it's going to be comfortable or not. A lot depends on how the starting lineup's going to evolve towards that game. Like, if it comes out that we're going to start Liao in that game against Venezia, we could really get on the front foot, you know, and make it very difficult for him. Um, but we don't know where we're going to be at with the injury situation, even though it's a few days after the Roma game. 
That being said, I'm going to go with the 2-0 win. Yeah, I think um, we're going to have, you know, we're going to batter Roma. We're going to be on high confidence. We're going to have the best possible lineup going into this Venezia game. And then we're really going to struggle and only win 1-0. I agree with AJ. I'm also going to say that kid has more goals than Salamanca does all season. So, And he's a midfielder, not an attacker. No, he no. doesn't. Does, I thought Salamakas has did... one goal. Oh, I yeah. thought it got called. No, no, no. That's if they got Renegade. No, Tony Tana no. got, they got uh, bought, so they're still a team now. Then I take that back. Right. They're tied. Yeah. Also, the other one, uh, Tanner Testman, he's on a red card, so he's not even playing. He's suspended. Well, no, he'll be back for our game, just not this week or this mm-hmm. first game. What yeah, uh, that's my prediction. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 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 um, is it? I think I've just read it's eleven thirty fixture, which I don't really like. Us playing yeah, that. yeah. So we're definitely going to struggle. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. Although I'm still quite confident. I think we'll crush him like three one or something. Like that. Yeah. Be Probably nice more. If we don't keep a clean sheet, I'm going to start asking questions about Mike. To be yeah. honest with you, I think AJ, that's nine th- or six thirty a.m. for us. Ah. Okay, that's uh, later than I would have been last year for me. So that's true. Mm. I think there's a load of goals in this game. I mean, I think there's goals in every game that we play because we leak. But um, I just think there's a lot that our strikers, especially with the options off the bench, we can really just destroy these teams like these. Lot, man. And I hope we do because I think it's good for confidence and good for our goal difference as well. Um, and good for players to get their stats up because we all know how that important that is. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it'll be like a 4-5-1 or something like that. But um, I'll be realistic and say 3-1. Mm. Nice. Good stuff. Um Let's hope two wins to kick off the new year. I mean, I'm just looking at our schedule here. Um, we've obviously got Roma, Venezia. And then we've got Genoa in the Coppa Italia round of 16. I can't imagine Genoa are going to prioritise that. They're, they're in a real fight for survival. So maybe we can rotate for that game as well. And yeah, manage I, don't, our legs. I can't imagine we prioritise that either. Well, yeah. But point being, second string should be enough there. Spezia at home. And that's when we've got the Milan UV. Um, double header before we welcome the lads back from AFCON. So it'd be nice to build up a head of steam going into double those header? two games. We play them back to back. Yeah. Yeah, we play Juve at home. There is then an international break between the two. Or at least I think that's what it is. Uh, because we then play Inter on the 6th of Feb. Oh, oh. Um, which I believe is scheduled for the last, the final of AFCON is on that day. Um, yeah, there's, there's a break between the 23rd of Jan and the 6th of Feb. Uh, mm-hmm. That's the event that's in, in the game. So here's to hoping uh, Algeria and Ivory Coast don't make it out of the group stage. Then, right? <laughs> it's kind of mad because they're like two of the pre-tournament yeah, favorites. The but they're in the same group, so there, there's a possibility one of them doesn't. You know what's going to happen? Kessie and Benesse are going for a 50-50 and like break each other's legs or something. Um, anyway, so let's do some market stuff, shall we, before we move on to some questions. Um where are we? Well, nobody signed. I mean, it's only day one on the market, but some people are impatient and are annoyed that we haven't done a Fiorentina and announced a good signing on day one of the transfer window. Um, that is a good pickup for them, by the way. €15 million Euros for Icone. Fair play to them. Um, the main rumours, let's start from the back. Uh, we've got Sven Botman, who is... He's asking why he seems to be coming down a bit by the day, and it seems that we're getting... We're trying to accelerate more and more for it. There's competition from from the Premier League, obviously, and that is going to be pretty difficult to overcome given the financial power that they have. Sounds like we're shooting for a loan with option to buy that could become an obligation. 20 mil plus bonuses. Um, oh, please get this done. Please, please. Like, if anybody is listening to this at the club, I don't know why you would be. Um, but, yeah, this, this is a real opportunity, you know. I, I feel like we're looking at a 50 million euro centre-back here who, because of Lille's situation, is available for about half price. Um, and he's left-footed, so he could come in not only to cover and partner Tamari um, now, between now and end of the season, while Kier's out, but also if Romagnoli leaves, then we've got a left-footed centre-back, and they are a premium nowadays. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he's he's an absolute unit. Um, I, I, I'm i just all for this, man. I don't, I don't know what else to say other than we need to get this done. If the opportunity I feel is like we talk about this every time we're linked with a Lille player. What is the relationship with Elliot and Lille? Is that like, are they just like, no, they don't like anymore. To, they used to, you, Elliot nothing. used to own Lille. It's gone now. Okay. But, yeah. It was him, the guy who, uh, some guy took out a loan basically to 
uh, from Elliot to buy Lille, and then he had to repay them as a creditor. Um, so there was the idea that um, they could give Milan a preferential lane when it comes to transfers, because ultimately they owe our owners money. So we could get a bit of a discount on certain things. But now it sounds like Elliot have basically been paid off. Um, yeah. so, so it was essentially the Yang Hong situation, except the Lille people could pay. Yeah. Right. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, I still think there probably is a preferential lane there. I mean, you know, we've given them good money for Liao and for Mignan, and um, they got Thiago Giallo back from us. Um, the player, I think, is going to be pretty key in this one. If he pushes to join us, because it sounds like he wants Champions League football, rather than to take the plunge and go to Newcastle and potentially be playing in the second division next season. Um, yeah, if, if we can convince him to try and push for the move, then that might be big. Uh, but if he decides that he wants to stay, he wants to play that Chelsea tie because they've got Chelsea in the UCL knockouts in February and then he'll he'll make a choice at the end of the season, that's not great for us because we need someone now. You know, we can't really afford to wait. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we just have to stump up the cash for this one. Um, you know, we, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and it, it, it bugs me how Maldini does business, how everything is loan with option. I get why he does it because we've been screwed so many times in the past. Um, but I feel like sometimes you just got to take that gamble. This kid is big. He's like 6'5". And that's a defender that we need. So hopefully... Uh, and he's young. He's, and he's, he's young. 21, 22, something yeah. like that. 22 in January, I think, yeah. And of course, there's like, there's, there's Delic, De Vrij, and Van Dijk, and he's still a Dutch international. Like, he still gets in the Netherlands team, which is pretty good. Yeah, um, yeah and he just seems like the perfect complement to Mar to Tamari to, to see us through to the end of the season. And then, as I said, we don't know what's going to happen with Romagnoli yet, but it'd be nice mm -hmm. to then have him there. And then if Romagnoli leaves, we can take advantage of, like, a Bremer situation, which is what sounds like yeah. is going to happen. But if we go into next season with a, with a defensive core of... Um, you know, Tamari uh, and Botman, and then you can have Bremer and Kier potentially as like a backup pairing. Uh, that is nice. That would be good. And then it frees up what we can do with Gabir even, you know. Um, so, yeah. yeah I think you kind of stole all the words from my mouth there. But, um, yeah, Sorry. I mean, I've been chirping up the, the Botman praise since before we had any links, before Kier was injured, because I didn't think it was going to happen. But, yeah, I've been... I've been big on the guy. I, I think he's a fantastic player. And as soon as Kier went down, I even tweeted. I was like, Botman loan plus option, you know, but before we had any links and then like the very tick next tack. day it happened. Yeah, exactly. Tick tack. Um, but yeah, I think be fantastic. And I do see Romagnoli leaving at the end of the, the season, his contract's expiring. I don't think a renewal is coming anymore. It seemed like it was going to, and now it seems like it doesn't. We get Bremen on a, on a free and, you know, having Kier come back and being our fourth choice center back isn't, isn't a bad option anymore. You know, I, I think it's realistic that we could get that done. The only downside is losing Romagnoli, who's been captain, who's been loyal, been here a while. He's an Italian national. So um, that part kind of sucks, but I mean, it is what it is. If we want to win trophies, sometimes you got to replace your good players with great players. So, yeah. Yeah. I think um, it's, the hard part is getting Lille to. I, I think he, it's, it's a hard because if you look at their squad, they've only got what Fonte, Thiago Jallo. They actually often play as a right back. Um, and I think there's like another centre back they have. He doesn't even start. So it's the really onus isn't on them to sell. I, I think that it really has to come from the player. He's got to really say like, I want out. I want to get an upgrade club. But they're not equally they're saying they have the uh, the Champions League fixtures to be playing against Chelsea, even though they're not doing too well in the league. It's like ninth or eighth place domestically. So um, it, the pressure's really on the player. If he's going to really, and we know with their you know lack of players in that position, Lil, um, it's got to be done early because it won't stretch on to the end of the window and then. They're not going to say yes and then have to get a replacement in for yeah. the door. So it has to happen yeah. in the next like sort of ten days. I wonder if we uh, offer them Romanioli as a part of the deal, sweeten it. You know, just kind of like yeah, like if we could get the Bremer thing done on a free for next season. I've always got this offer feeling. I think it's, it's not. I think obviously the American sports where you can like, offer a contract like fucking trade deals and stuff. But like in football, it really has to be all the parties committed to it. Like not right. just the players, the, the clubs, the agents. There's yeah. so many people that have yeah. to agree to it. Trade deals are so hard these days to really get like a player for a player swap. It's just mm -hmm. um, it's very difficult. And, and then you come under investigation for like financial doping anyway. So yeah. 
you know, you well, got to be careful I mean, with that. You, you look at the Audrey Silva Revit deal. It's not like we haven't done it under this management mm. already. You know, yeah, it is yeah. possible. I, think Romagnoli just... would, I, I really don't think Romagnoli would fancy that. Yeah, I think I don't either, but I, I also don't see him not doing what the club wants. I, I think he's been a loyal servant and will continue to be so, even if his contract expires. I think he'll, he'll take one for the team. I genuinely think. I think he's going to stay. Games. Yeah, I think he might yeah. need to be honest. I would like him to. I mean, the renewal is still like, an option, especially on a lower contract. It doesn't sound urgent. Like it, it doesn't sound like there's mass panic. Whereas with Kessie, everyone's like, "Oh my god, sell him in January, do something like offer him a final deal, do something to like get something out of this yeah. asset." It seems like the club are a bit more calm on Romagnoli, and and they're going to meet with Raiola and say, "Look, this is this is where we're at," and um, hopefully it'll be a, a positive discussion. Yeah, I think it's because. The news that has come out with Romagnoli is he knows that he's going to take a pay, a pay cut, but he also told his agent that he wants to stay. Mm-hmm. With Kessier, he's just like, I want X amount, and every time it goes up, and it's like, yo, get this guy out of our club. Like, mm-hmm. you don't want someone like that at the club who's going to hold them ransom, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's worth money. Romagnoli is arguably worth not a lot, a lot less. of money. Yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. a lot less. What do we think about? Say we get Botman, so that becomes starter next to Tamori. We renew Romagnoli, and we still go for Brema on a free. And then Kier's future is kind of in limbo with his injury. Think, Maybe I he think, doesn't recover I think, back. I think Brema's not free. He's only his contract yeah. 2023. I think. Yeah. Um, uh, I thought we could sign him on a on a free right now, and then for the summer. No, Brema's oh, 2023 okay. contract. Um, well, then I've well, had this I mean, wrong. The summer while. like would be the last chance for Torino to sell. So the idea yeah. is that we would get him on a. You know, cut price deal, which wouldn't be too bad. Uh, yeah, I think, I think if, if Romagnoli walks, then we go for Bremer. I think if he renews, then we we just we keep it as it is. With, gotcha. um, yeah, that makes sense. I, I thought he was done this year for some reason. Okay, never mind. Um, one of the things that has been mentioned is well, it's all to do with Kessie, really. Um, a couple of reports have come out today that are quite interesting. Sounds like Renato Sanchez is pretty much still a, a concrete target for us for the summer. Um, been talking with his agent Jorge Mendes obviously over Liao's renewal and apparently Renato's name has come up in conversation he would be happy to move um, he has interest in Germany and in England but he's played in those two countries before and he didn't have a great time so he wants to try something a bit new um, would would be great I mean he ticks all the boxes apart from his injury record which is a you know he still doesn't read well um, as a list, and then possibly also some questions about stylistically whether he would play the same role and have the same responsibilities as Kessie. In my mind, he's still more of a box to box player, but then we've seen Kessie play a more advanced role, like the, against Empoli. And you think, well, you know, is he just an all round kind of dynamic midfielder? And, and would he be perfect? I mean, I don't know what kind of transfer fee there would be, it hasn't been mentioned in the papers today. Um, but I think I'm just about in favour of this deal over saying no. Mm-hmm. I'm leaning against it still. I just, w- with our club's injury record and his personal injury record, it's just a disaster waiting to happen. Mm. Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, all you have to do is go on like his transfer marked injury history and it, it just doesn't read well. Um, it, it, there's been people who've been arguing saying, well, they're not all muscle injuries and that that is true. Um, but we're the at good the majority point, are. <laughs> yeah, we're at the point now as well where, um, as I've mentioned before, we we don't owe it to players to rehabilitate them if they're injury prone. Um, we need players now who offer guarantees because otherwise we're setting ourselves up for failure. Ultimately, um, so yeah, don't know, boys. Thoughts? I don't want anyone who's injury prone. Yeah, fair, understandable. <laughs> concern. <laughs> Anyone who joins us will become injury prone. Right. <laughs> so we don't yeah. want them already. There, we don't want any players. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I like his. I love his profile. I think he's great. Um, I think if we get someone like him, and we can look at different options in midfield, we got to not just look at him coming to us and like what he could do as a like for like replacement, Kessie. Then you got to bring back players like Yassine Adli and then Tomas Pobega, and we can then start looking into four three three formations or, or any sort of variations of it, like. I think he's great. I like him. I think he's really good. And I think if it works out well, it's a gamble I'm willing to take, especially with our relations with Leo. It won't be sort of like a hefty price tag. Uh, I think it's a gamble I'm willing to take because if it works out well, I think he is a genuinely 
upgrade, like an, atta- an attacking perspective to Kessie. I think he just progresses the ball forward better. Um, he's just an all round technically better player than Kessie, but Kessie's obviously got a better fitness history and um, he kind of like built more solidly. But I, I, I kind of want to get us away from playing sometimes defensive football and having one dimensional players. I'd rather have someone like Renato Sanchez, who is mm. quality on his day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely an argument that having two more like press resistant midfielders would make us look much easier on the eye. And if we switch to a mm. three, you have Tonali down the middle playing the reduced role as he did at Brescia. That that would be um that would be tempting, definitely. Um where are we? Roman Fervor may or may not be coming. I mean, I don't want to spend too long on this because there's a lot of mixed reports doing the rounds, but um the probably the, the main one being Daniel Ilongo saying that we're still in talks with his agent and the new idea is to secure him ahead of the summer and leave him on loan there until the summer with with Brest because he's having a fantastic season there, to be fair. Um, he's knuckled down despite giving some rogue interviews saying that he wants to leave and that he, he wants to join Milan, basically. Um, and then other papers saying that we're not interested. Um, we don't like the way that he acted by giving those interviews. We don't want an unprofessional player. And we're, we're looking at other profiles as a result. And then you've got all the sources who are saying we're not going to sign anyone in attack um, mm. for, for, for the January window. Um, I personally, out of those three different stances, I think we're probably likely to make a, a move in the attacking department only if we sell Castillejo and we sell him on a permanent. And I think that's going to be more difficult than people are saying. You know, you see so many people on social media saying, just get rid of them, sell them, and then we've got this much money that we can pay. It, do, it just doesn't work that way. I mean, the demand probably isn't there for Castillejo, sadly. Um, for a team to come forward and offer €8 million Euros permanent deal. Um, if anything, we're probably going to get rid of him on a loan with option type deal. Um, and, and that's kind of where the market's at, you know. The clubs that are interested in in him, like Genoa, let's say, um, are probably not going to come forward with the money that we need to sell for. And that's why I think some exits, Conti aside, who seems to be close to joining Empoli, um, it, it's going to be more difficult than, than people think um yeah don't know yeah i don't think castillo is going anywhere um it you, you just look at like guys like caldara who we've loaned out the last what two three windows and no one's taken up the option do we think castillo is going to perform better than that probably not so if anyone does take him up on a one plus option they're not taking the option um i, I think unfortunately he's probably going to leave on a free it's going to be one that no one's going to be in too much of an uproar about but i think that's where his future is headed. Um, as far as R- Roman, whatever his name is, he just made a Twitter. So, you know, he got attacked by Milan fans already, positively attacked, but. Oh, uh, right. Good. Yeah, yeah. Like, come to me, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, I joined yeah. into it too, just because why not? But yeah, I did um, see that. Yeah. So I was you know, like, you're the only one who tweeted at him, but that's only because I saw your tweet and no one else's. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I was say, there was a either. ton of them. In amongst all the chicken nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> Nugget gate. <laughs> Nugget gate, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, they find a way, don't they? Everyone yeah. finds a way to have something. Uh, yeah. Uh, who is... Oh, you, you mentioned today we were offered Di Maria and turned it down. I think that's, A, complete bullshit. I think mm. uh, we were not offered him, and if we were, we would have absolutely accepted that. A huge contract as well, and uh, old. So he's it, just not even like the kind of profile that I think Elliot would say, yeah, get him in. Even I think though he's he would, the exact he would, profile uh, that we've gone for in attackers after Giroud and Zlatan. Mm. All going grey. Um, yeah, he would undoubtedly be a, a fantastic bit of quality to add. But um, yeah, I agree. I'm very sceptical uh, about the idea that we would offer to him. If anything, it sounds like he's going to sign a new one-year deal with PSG where he's actually still been pretty good for yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, there's not really many other rumours on the attacking front. The, the main sources, the, the ones that we, we tend to trust more, um, your Skies, Milan News, are, are sort of saying that nothing's expected to happen. Not expected to sign a striker or a playmaker or a winger. Um, so I subscribe to that for now. Uh, I guess the only thing that might change it is if something does get worked out with Pellegrini's loan. We can all admit that it hasn't worked out for everybody involved, you know. Monaco probably sent him there hoping that he, he had a resurgence and they got the seven million in total. Um we got him probably as a bit of cover, but knowing that we plan to make a big investment in the summer and he won't be staying around. 
Um, he came on a bit of a rehab assignment, you know, hoping to put his injury problems behind him. Hasn't been able to do that. If we could somehow offload his loan to like a Torino or a Genoa, apparently the two clubs interested, then that could be good. Mm-hmm. And then we could potentially bring in a striker. But I just don't see that happening either. You know, he's going to be injured until potentially the middle of next month. So is anyone really going to want to take a punt on that? I think we're lumped with him as well. Um, so I don't expect many movements apart from a centre-back signing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I think, like, if you look at the squad numerically, it's big as it is, even though there are some players with clean and that need upgrades or, you know, players of certain ilk, like an attacking mid or a winger to come in. I just think we've got players, you know, I think when it comes to the summer, they're going to you have free agent players on, you know, the, like we've been linked with, like Kamara or Bellotti, for example. Look at them first. Let me go look at the players we got on loan. Um, Florenzi and Macias, you know, what's going to happen with their future? And then you've got the players coming back from loan. Adley, Poberga, Colombo. I think once all that's worked out, then we see what we're working with. Any sales potentially with players like Cassio, if he's still there at the time. And then we can then start looking at like maybe getting a Roman Fiverr in the summer. But um, I just think right now there's so many players and some like so many players in the balance right now of what's going to happen in the future of this squad. I don't think we're going to see it. Other than just a centre back, that's the only move we're going to make. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, let's not forget we still are technically under our agreement sanction with FFP because of. Yeah. COVID, you know, they merged those financial years. So it would have been, we would have been up from it, uh, I think over the summer, but now it's this coming summer. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't expect much movement. I think we want to make sure that we're squared away on that front and then start making moves maybe next summer if we reach it, which I do think we will, um, just with the added Champions League and, and stadium revenue will probably be a lot closer to where we need to be. Mm. I will say, I, I, a thousand percent think we're going to sign uh, Roman Fiverr at, at, the, at the latest by the summer. I think, 100% think we're going to sign him. I just think, so many links there. Um, I think it's doable, the price that they want. And I just think we, we, we're touching the French market quite a lot. So I think yeah. it's going to... And, and it's the goals. profile that we're going for. And, yeah, Young and player, good. cheap as um, good, yeah. Can yeah. play left, uh, right wing, can play attacking, he can play left wing sometimes. So I think he's just... And uh, I would, he's, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with the interviews that he did. And I mean, God, football yeah. is dominated by uh, unauthorised interviews at the moment. You know, <laughs> let's face it. But... Um, um, yeah, I also think, you know, if he came, he would be properly supported. And, yeah. you know, I think everybody was hyped for it in the summer. And I don't think that that hype has necessarily gone away because they've seen how well he's performed in a pretty average side uh, since then. As I say, he's knuckled down and he's 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 putting up some fantastic numbers. And, yeah, I mean, all for it, I think it's very hard to find value in the market at the moment. That's why yeah. so many clubs are going for these Bosman-type deals. Um, keep reading about more and more of them every day. I mean, like Borussia Mönchengladbach are losing two of their best players on freeze and they've like announced it officially. Um, we should be all over Zakaria, by the way. I stand by that. Um, even Ginter wouldn't be bad as a centre-back if we lost Romagnoli. But um, yeah, and, and it seems to be the way now. So then the clubs that know that they have assets to sell, you know, you look at Vlahovic with Fiorentina and other strikers, um, they're going to try and maximise the price for that. Yeah. But one constant seems to be that you can find value in France. So it does not surprise me that we are, we're still shopping around that market. Well, I think um, that, that price inflation is exactly why we're seeing so many free transfers. It's, huh. you know, the, the clubs have inflated prices. We saw Neymar, 250 million. Obviously, no one's gotten near that since, but we've seen, you know, Maguire's price, uh, Kepa's price, you know, all, all these huge price tags for bang average players that clubs just can't simply afford. And now with contract prices going up instead, mm. clubs are just going for the free transfer, save some money. Mm. And it's, it's quite similar to like American sports, isn't it? You know, you've got the NBA at that massive free uh, free free agency. I think it was like yeah. last season. Oh, yeah. and the players are putting uh, uh, they're bringing their future into their hands. They're saying, all right, I'm going to pick my next club and get myself a big contract with it. Mm. I think like Wenger alluded to this like a couple, maybe like five or seven years ago. He said saying that this is this is the future of football. You know, mm-hmm. players are going to run down the contracts and then they're going to pick their own destiny. And I think, um, but yeah, other than, I was going to say on Fiverr, I can't wait for him to join us. He's a bit skinny <laughs> and we can feed him some burgers and chicken nuggets and get him, <laughs> get him on the McMillan diet. I, I'll yeah. be honest. I ate those nuggets to troll Martino and I have felt like shit ever since. Those were not good <laughs> at all. Pulled your hamstring as well. In, yeah, I got injured. In, so in the we're an ACL, probably maybe. right, man. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff was um, not good. Yeah, I don't even want to go there, to be honest, <laughs> on the food front. But, um, yeah, and funnily enough, Jan has missed this episode because he ate a dodgy curry last night. So yeah. we should probably just stay away from the fast food for a while. Um, yeah, uh, the, the one thing that I do want to mention as well is, um, 
because someone will have asked about it in the questions. Nobody knows where Julian Alvarez is going. And that's quite funny because he was like the one guy who's the hottest commodity. His future was going to be sorted by... I thought I saw uh, United this morning. United yeah. meeting with his agent, but so are we. His agent's oh, coming to Italy uh, in the next week. So that's good. See, he can fly to Italy, but we can. Well, we can. Never mind. Um, Don't get mad he started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not good. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see if anything comes of that meeting. You know, uh, if it comes out that we've secured him for the summer or something, that would be kind of cool. Uh, something to get excited about. Uh, but I still expect him to end up at a Premier League side. Even Newcastle now are being mentioned as being like a, a team that are willing to throw money at it now. Uh, he's got a release clause as well. So we, we'll see on that front. And um, it's not a very high release clause either. You it's know? 20 mil, I think, isn't it? There's going to be a lot of tough clubs that activate that. And to be honest with you, I think we just should do it. I would... I don't know if I want to say I'd prioritize that over over Botman because we absolutely need a center back right now. But, I mean, you're looking at a guy who could potentially be worth 60, 70 million as a striker in a few years. If you could get Do him for 20 now and, and stop the other big clubs, I probably would. Yeah. So what we were told is that we have a budget that we can spend on a defender in January. Mm -hmm. But by the sounds of it, we're going for a loan with option to buy. Let's say we managed to get that over the line for Botman because Leela pressured whatever. Does that because we were already planning an investment for a centre back in summer, and we're going to plan to buy a striker in the summer? Does that mean by deferring that payment that we do have a bit of budget to spend on getting Alvarez in this window? Who knows? But I, I don't know I, for that very reason. I, I think it depends on if Elliot will give us that money to spend elsewhere. Because it's kind of like, well, you can spend it here because that's what we absolutely need. Mm. but you don't have permission to use it elsewhere. I think the offer we would present to him is, look, your, your release is $20 million. Mm. We'll offer you 15 and you can keep him the rest of the season and, and see if that sweetens it enough because that seems to be the profile that we're going for, but I don't think it, it They'd works. have him for half the season because the Argentine season works like winter to winter, so that's mm. the one thing that makes it a bit gotcha. difficult. I'd just offer him Casa Milan. Um, and see if we can revoke the sale. <laughs> and say the building. <laughs> send it over on like a plane and get them to put it up when it lands in Argentina. Um, <laughs> 20 million <laughs> right. building. <laughs> Questions um, for Rezzy the Goat. Um, if Elliot don't want to spend, why don't we just go get Martial on loan and pay his wages? Now, I th did we mention Martial last week? I can't remember. Um, I don't think, think we did, on. but it's a. I think we did two weeks ago. Mm. Maybe. Yeah, maybe that was it. Um, so he's. It seemed like he was going to Sevilla, um, but then things have cooled off a little bit on that mm -hmm. front. Um, and Man United seemed pretty open to loaning him out and actually covering half of his wages. That that seems to be the story. And that that's the big thing, yes. too, because he's on them prem wages, and that's just too much for us. But oh, yes, if we could get a loan at, at half price like that, yeah, can't hurt. The answer is yes. I mean, even if you could only get him for half a season, he could be the difference. Mm -hmm. And then you never know, like... I don't know. I look at players, wingers, who had an awful lot of talent who've fallen by the wayside at Manchester United, and I look at Alexis Sanchez at Inter and think they found a way to get something done. They found a way to get a deal done for a player who clearly still has something about him. Why can't we? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, it doesn't we care about our finances, but... <laughs> He's still there. <laughs> um, yeah, it doesn't strike that... the kind of player that we, we will actually go for, but yeah. I think as soon as United players leave United, they, they play a good. lot better. Yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. so if we can lock this in, I would take it 100%. Yeah, yeah. I, I, he's got undoubted quality. Um, Especially before Ranić unlocks him, because it's only a matter of time. Hmm. Yeah. When they're like weird-ass formation. I don't, I, don't, I don't like him, man. I've watched a lot of football. I don't really like his... I don't know. I, mean, I think we've, we've got a lot of left-wingers... What's the point? Like, I mean, I guess he can play like a false nine, but mm. that's what see. that's where I'd have him. I'd have him up front. I think he's best. He's played his best football for United at, uh, up front um, yeah. when he plays in and around the box. But the issue being that they've tried to crowbar like every single good forward they have into that role, um, and they've played Rashford on the left, and you know, it, yeah. it's yeah, it's been tough for him. To be fair, I feel a bit sorry for Martial. He's just been completely cast aside but yeah if there were the margins to get that done then go for it but by the sounds of it you probably will still end up in Spain um, Pete 1899 he's French. he is okay. French isn't it so he might fit in with the whole contingent we that's have, true it? actually yeah mm. 
anyway. And yeah. he was at Monaco, so he must know Moncada, probably. Half our squad. <laughs> yeah, that as well. Um, I can't wait until the headline comes out that Martial's asked for De Balotore what it's like to be at Milan. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pete, Pete asks, good, is there any, any, any hope of Elliot spending more than 5 to 10 mil this window? I mean, we kind of talked a little bit about the budgetary constraints that we're under. I think the money is available to strengthen the squad, but Elliot have to green light everything. They'll mm-hmm. probably green light something for Botman, but then if Maldini comes along and says... Um, we're going to bid 20 mil for Randall Colo Moani from FC Nantes. Uh, they might be a bit like, what? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I, I think every operation is judged on its merit by them. And they've got an endless pot of money. Like, this cannot be stressed enough. Elliot are incredibly rich to the extent that it, it doesn't even matter to them, really. But what we are still under is the because... settlement agreement. And um, yeah, the richer you are, the, the stingier you are with your money. Yeah, but course. also, like, they don't, like, they just got us out of out of a financial shithole. Yeah. They don't want us to end up there. And then when they sell the club, be like, oh, here's mm. all this debt. Yeah. Yeah. So the problem is not Elliot having the money. The problem is um, not necessarily the problem. It's just the situation we're in with mm-hmm. the intermediary period with the club's accounts. All the forecasts are really positive for the 21-22 year, by the way. Um, sounds like the revenue is massively on the up thanks to the 25 new partnerships and stuff that we've got, the Champions League revenue. So maybe this summer might be the sort of watershed moment where we just go for it and think, yeah, we do need that big striker. Um, January might just be a case of seeing us through as it as it always is, really. Um Michael Gambino, thoughts on Bellotti coming in on a free double digits past a uh, few seasons in goals and assists. Well, we That's talk about call. it. We talk about it plenty. Um, he's got two in nine this season in the league, which isn't great. And he has completely torn a muscle in his leg and will be out for two or more months. So he won't be coming in in January. I feel pretty certain that we can rule that one out. Um, in the summer, well, there's all this talk about him potentially joining up with Insignia at Toronto FC. Um, but then most of the papers seem to agree he's holding out for a phone call from us. He, he's definitely better than Pellegri. Like, there's no doubting that he will give us more games than Pietro Pellegri. He's got more credit in the bank than him, um, would arrive for £6 million less than him, but higher wages. Um, so if he was coming in as to be that kind of third-choice striker, I'd be okay with it, but we need to make that big investment like there, there is no no hiding from the fact that we need to go out and sign a big striker in the summer and I'll be really disappointed if we don't you know and if we try rely on Ibra and Giroud again heading into next season that would just be suicidal potentially yeah I, yes <laughs> yeah Matty agree yeah, I, don't I, want him, I, don't, I don't want there, him I don't like the guy so yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's good he's alright I like right. the guy <laughs> <laughs> he's 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 not yeah. bad. I mean, I've seen a lot of him play for Italy. I think he's sometimes quite basic, and I think it, he kind of quite funny if we got him on a free. Considering that uh, the owner of three and I wanted to if he's you know, basic, Austin Anthony should love him. Oh, no. Anthony- <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's Stefano talk. Don't interrupt. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot. I mean, it'll be justice if, you know, what you wanted, 100 mil back in 2017, 2018 for him. And now we're going to get him on a free transfer. If we do get him, it would be quite funny in that perspective. But um, I, I think when you look at squads and you've got to think like limited options for a, cert- for a certain role in a team, you can't have too many of one player. You know, United are having that issue right now with their team. They've got so many attackers. It's that massive imbalance of who's playing. And you're right. I think if we go into next season with like, say, Ibra, Giroud and Bellotti, is that really encouraging? No, not really, because you want that younger player. But at the same time, do we not take up this option to sign him on a free transfer? And then obviously maybe see out Ibra and Giroud for their last two years, you know, um, with us, for example, and then get your next uh, big money striker the following summer. Have we got enough patience for that as fans or as a, as a club? That's the question. Um, mm. I'd rather us get, you know, see in the new generation and get a younger player this summer, that big money, you know, striker like a, I know we can't do, but say, for example, like a Vlahovic or, you know, all these other, um, like Nunes, wherever his name is from, from Benfica, all these other targets we have been linked with. But at the same time, is it realistic, in my opinion, that we're going to do that? I can't see it. I think we're just going to flesh out the other positions which we need to invest in, like the right winger position, 
like another centre midfielder, like a Renato Sanchez. If Kessie goes, I just can't see enough money being there available to get a top quality striker. I just think we'll, we'll sort of like slowly add to this quality of a squad. And yeah. then I don't like, think oh. that we should go into next season with Drew and Ibra as our starting strikers. I, I, I don't oh, think so no. as well. That I would be horrible. Yeah, yeah, I don't think we should. But I think the reality of it is that I, I, I'm always going to be a pessimist. I'm, always, I'm like negative and think we're not going to spend a shitload of money, even though it's there with Elliot. I just think we're not in that model yet. Um, mm-hmm. Maldini's always said it's going to take back to back to back to back years of Champions League qualification to, to be able to spend that money. And I think we're going to look at another summer of maybe like 60, 70 mil being spent. And I don't know, when you add up all those players that we still have to sign, like a Roman Fiver or Renato Sanchez, you know, that's about, I don't know, 30, 40 million there. Mm. Is that extra 20, 30 going to cut it and buy a player like Blachowicz? So I'd rather I'd rather mm. us have that fat pot of money, go for someone top-notch, you know, the next generation of a player of that, of that you know, striking calibre, Rather than kind of go in the middle of that and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Guy. So I think what's the point? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and I wonder how much of the Bilotti thing is the fear factor as well of thinking, what if he goes to a team around us who do need that backup striker rather than a starting striker, and he does really well, and yeah. then we look idiots for not taking up that deal on a free because he's obviously going to pick us being a boy and family club and stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just think there's been so many chances for him to come and he hasn't yet. Um, and I just don't see it happening. I think it's one of those things where the roads are perhaps destined to run parallel for so long and never meet, you know? Um, we will see. I mean, it's um, possible, but you also, you look at Zlatan's return. It was rumored every window since 2015 before it finally happened. So, mm, I mean, yeah, multiple yeah. opportunities doesn't mean there won't be more down the road, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe. I remember like Jeco when I was growing up. Jeco, we always be linked with yeah. him. He was a boy Milan fan, and that never happened. And that was something that I always wanted to happen as well. At the same time, and these are players equally are, who are better than players like Belotti. I mean, like, um, I, I mean, I, would I wouldn't really Jekko be fussed. Over if you want to yeah, I would. Oh yeah, hundred yeah, percent, hundred percent. But we'll see. I, I'm not going to be fussed if we don't get him. But if we do get him. I don't know. There's, there's, there's now things going around my mind, going like, all right, what does this mean for our, the future of our attackers? Yeah. Are we entrusting it in a, a guy who may, may not be fully fit for a whole season, or you know, equally inconsistent, Bellotti, and two other strikers who are well above the age of thirty-five. So, um, mm. yeah, yeah, a lot of issues to figure out there. Um, we got like three questions on this. I mean, it was a, it was a sport media set report, so can't take, I guess, too much. You know, they're not a tier one source, but. Um, Spurs want Kessie in January, apparently, and are willing to offer up T- Tongue and Dombele. I think that's how you pronounce it, roughly. Um, Tongue yeah, and Dombele, of, yes. Not... Yeah, briefly touched on it. Um, it hasn't worked out for him since he moved there from Lyon for like a, a total 72 million euros. Um, as I say, there's not too much credibility to this at the moment. Once someone more reputable comes out with it, then uh, it perhaps deserves further discussion. What I will say is I do like the idea of us getting something back for, for Kessie as an asset, you know, if we're looking at it from a purely transactional point of view. Um, and I also think Ndombele would would fare better in Syria than what he has done in the Premier League. I think he just struggled with that initial adaptation. There wasn't a system that fit him. I don't actually know why Spurs signed him because um, Mourinho as well, you know, he, he was the guy who came in and it, couldn't find much use to him, just berated his effort constantly. And that seems to knock his confidence. But a fresh start in a new league and a league like Syria, where you get rewarded for dynamism and uh, dynamism and you, you know, you 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 look good if you try and do something with the ball, mm-hmm. um, then I think it, it could fit well. But I yeah. just it, something doesn't stack up to me because there you've got a player that Spurs paid sixty odd million for, and you've got a player who's expiring contract six months that from a you know value point of view doesn't make sense to me but yeah I like yeah it doesn't idea. make sense to us because we're used to to, to syria markets but Premier League clubs can afford to to take a loss on a player like that you know they're and conti wants immediate injection always mm-hmm. um he's he's still in a top four fight i mean they got like three games in hand or whatever and, and could jump into third or fourth pretty quickly here if, if they win all those so uh, we know kessie's a guy he likes it's not unheard of to think that he would go for that. And they could definitely offer Kessie the contract size he wants. So I don't see, I mean, he's, he's shown he doesn't really care about the, the badge as much as the numbers. So I, I could see him absolutely taking that. And 
and Dombele under a guy like Pioli, who's really good at man managing and did probably boost his confidence and, you know, add a boy him back into shape. Like, I, I don't see why that's a bad move. Now, do I think it's happening? Probably not. Um, just because, like you said, the source isn't too hot. But I, I wouldn't be against that, to be honest with you. Anything that could save face and, and not let us lose Kessie for 100% free is a good deal. Yeah. I agree. But that man management is working great with Bakayoko. Well, he just kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, isn't he having any issues um, historically with, with Tottenham he's, uh, and Dumbledore that he can't play in like a, a double pivot? I think that's been the problem before that he's had with players like uh, coaches like Mourinho. I'm not saying he won't be able to succeed at Milan, but if that's kind of like not going in his favour, and we've seen Renato, like if we get in Dumbledore, we're not going to get Renato Sanchez in the summer. Mm-hmm. I mean, I oh. think that's just jeopardising that move, and I'd rather get a Renato Sanchez because I just think he suits the position better. But at the same time, and Dombele's French, another French player. I guess these things might help him embed himself quite quicker. Um, and like, I won't say no to not losing Kessie on like a, on a free and getting nothing back to it from it. So um, if there is some truth in this rumours, I, would, I wouldn't be against it. But at the same time, I can't quite see it happening. I don't know. I think the, the points that AJ said about them dropping the money, um, yes, they might be willing to just write their losses and, and, and just get Kessie in now. But I just, I don't know. I think Spurs will wait until the summer um, because they are quite tight usually. Yeah. I also, I'm also like utterly convinced that Kessie's going to PSG. It, it just, it just feels like another Leonardo thing to me. Yeah, uh, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's it, boys. It's been a pleasure. We've somehow got over an hour again. Uh, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a good one. And we will have games to recap next time we record. Uh, Christmas break over. Let's hope for two uh, wins to recap. Um, yeah, I've been your host, Ollie Fisher. AJ. Yep, uh, target forty-five. Edward underscore underscore Toth. This thing here. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for listening if you made it this far. Um, be sure to check out our online merchandise store. you find a link to that in the description. Follow us on all the social media, like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, keep checking the website for more interesting features, latest transfer news. Yeah, you know what it is. Um, we'll catch you in a week's time. Ante, eccolo Ante Ante in area di rigore, Ante Ante, Ante Ante, Ibra, gol! Vediamo se è buono, ce l'ho da buono, ce l'ho da buono, ce l'ho da buono.